Mike and Kevin from Fieldcraft Survival. We're out here on the range training law enforcement. Lucky to have two SWAT guys with us. Uh, we're gonna train alternate positions today. We've talked alternate positions in various forms. I'm gonna concentrate on standing in the open and the benefit of reducing your signature via an alternate position. Kev's gonna be discussing some other things as well. So I'm gonna talk about shooting from inside cover, shooting from inside buildings, getting multiple points of contact, and building that solid, stable, and durable position for, for engaging targets at distance. All right, let's do this. Guys, I got uh, two mats, Matt and Matt Squared. Uh, we're out here talking alternate positions, and it's all about changing levels. One of the things that we talk about in mindset as related to like technical training is your capacity and capability to process information. And here's my pet peeve with alternate uh, positions. Look, when you're doing alternate positions, you don't wanna oversaturate or over uh, task saturate the guys who are doing the alternate positions by making them do a five step process per alternate position. Meaning, if I have these guys go prone, which I'm not gonna do that to them because it's kind of muddy, but I'm, I'm not gonna say, hey, this is the five step process to get there. Because what I'm doing is I'm basically making their brains focus on what to do position wise when if I just focused on their natural ability to get to that position and to become more efficient over time or over reps then it's a lot better for everybody because then they could maximize that capability and focus on downrange where their attention should be in the first place it's a tidbit capacity neurological nerd stuff process and so the bottom line is let's not over complicate something like going to a knee squatting, kneeling, going to the prone. How about we just do it and build efficiency based on the person? One thing as a tactician, as an instructor for Fieldcraft Survival, I don't like is this idea that as a tactical instructor, uh, there's a one answer and solution for a tactic. We are all different people, different sizes, shapes, and, and they vary. I mean, some guys like can't take a left knee because their left knee's blown out. So we have to be able to adapt, and, and I'm gonna show you that adaptation with these SWAT guys just working through different positions. So here's how it works. So basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have these guys go live. We're gonna do three shots per um, uh, segment, per iteration, uh, for the sake of repetition. And when we shoot three rounds down range, I'm gonna call the alternate position, and Matt and Matt are simply gonna replicate the position, position that I call they will become more efficient. And what I tell uh, students in our open enrollment classes is if you don't know the position, then look to your left and right and try to figure it out on your own. Uh, over time, over repetitions, we'll adapt. All right, so the first position we're gonna shoot is feet together, feet together. Shooter's ready, stand by, threat. So check this out. So here, what I've done is isolated specific individual movements and they adapted. If they were slow, I could show them a more efficient and effective method. But remember, as a civilian, you don't do it repeatedly over time again and again and again. So you don't get those outlier 10,000 hours worth of reps. So in this instance, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work them through the adaptation of the position. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, guys, from prone to kneeling through the duration we're going to do five rounds meaning i want them to shoot through the positioning just because you're going to a position doesn't mean you stop the gunfight so now we're we're learning to move and shoot through the positioning just like you do, would do in real life you wouldn't go boom boom okay wait a minute boom boom you would go boom 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 to the position we're working through that in reverse order so right all right guys from prone to kneeling Five rounds through the duration. Stand by. Threat. Good. So different variations, right? Uh, Matt squared kind of stood up and he took a couple shots and then broke a couple shots through the extension of getting to the kneeling when Matt number one took two shots, went up. I actually had a, a slide lock reload, reloaded 
uh, after that one shot was broke and segmented the, the difference between the two. That's okay. This efficiency and this modeling is gonna allow us to adapt and grow and learn as individuals. Like I said, like I have a bum right leg. I'm missing half my hamstring on my right leg. There's certain things that I can't do via a five-step method via tech, a technician or tactician. All right, so what we're gonna do is from kneeling to standing five rounds through the duration. Shooter's ready. Stand by, threat. Good, index, put them on safe, let them hang. All right, so guys, in alternate positions, remember the overall objective is to upgrade my situation. I don't need to get sucked up onto obstacles to use them as cover and concealment. I could use a little standoff, but the idea is if I'm standing here, I'm 100% a target. If I reduce my signature by coming here, I reduce my signature in half. If I go to the prone, I've segmented that in half, reducing the chances of me being hit, uh, the, the hit probability by the bad guys. So there's a whole bunch of good reasons why we would get in alternate positions. I'm gonna let Kevin talk about specific ways in which you can reinforce your position in an alternate position. Thanks for the help, guys. Hey, I'm here with Matt. He's a SWAT police officer. And we're gonna talk about shooting from this window. So the principles of shooting a non-standard position are you wanna be solid, stable, and durable position. You need to get as many points of contact with something solid as possible. And I'll explain that in a second. So obviously if you're shooting from a window in a military contact, you wanna be back in the room, but sometimes that's not an option. So Matt's just gonna get set up and get ready to fire out of this window. Now if he's engaging something at a couple of hundred meters, he's going to have to get more stable than that. So again, we're looking for multiple points of contact. So if you can get one, get two. If you can get two, get three. So let's start here. If Matt pushes that weapon against that solid position, that's one point of contact, okay? Now, if he squats down and drops that barrel on, or not the barrel, but the rail onto that solid position, now I've got one here and I've got one against here, so I've got two, okay? If you can get two, get three. If Matt pushes his back against that wall and puts that ass cheek against this solid position, that's four, that's three positions, three solid positions. Now, is that good enough? Maybe, but why not try to get more? So if Matt takes that right knee and puts it against that cover right there, now we've got one, two, three, four very, very solid positions to shoot from. We need to, when we train army guys, we see them a lot trying to hold the weapon like this. Doesn't matter how you hold the weapon, what's, which, whatever is most solid. So if I tell Matt to take that, that left hand and drop it on there and put some downward pressure on that weapon, if that's what works, that's fine. We're looking for something very, very solid to take an accurate long range shot. So again, multiple points of contact. If you can get two, get three. If you can get three, get four. Now, when Matt runs up here and he jumps into this position, he's not gonna get in one position at a time. He's not gonna try to put his weapon in, then his shoulder, and then he needs to practice over and over again, coming in and hitting all those points all at once, taking that shot and moving to the next position. You don't have time to linger there. So as he gets up there, just come back here, Matt. Just do me a favor, move into that position, get solid. Bang, and he's, he's shooting and he's moving again. You're not giving the enemy time to, fix, to, to get a fixed position on you. Get in there, solid, stable, durable. Take your shots and move to the next position. Okay, so knowing the principles of what can, what makes up a good solid position, you can apply them anywhere. So that's one position. Matt here, we're gonna move in and we're gonna look at another position. So let's go in here. So we're gonna try to shoot out of this window. So I'm gonna bring Matt up, put the weapon solidly here. Now again, he can lock in against here, that's one position, or he can drop the weapon down now he can either bring it back, if he can squat down, push forward on it, I got a point of contact here. If he can get that solidly against here, he can grab up here. That's another point of contact, you can grab up here if that's what works for you. But the problem is, this arm here is kind of out there flapping, which makes for a very unstable position. And there's no real good way to secure that. Now people all the time forget about shooting from buildings, use the furniture and use whatever is available. So we look here, we don't have any furniture, but we got a pallet. I can take this pallet, I can jam it in solid there, and Matt can drop his right elbow on that position, and it's going to help him secure and take that long range shot 
with much, much more precision. Again, he's got that ass cheek pushed up against the wall. He's got his knee against the, the forward wall. He's got points of contact here, here, there, and there. Solid, stable, durable, and very, very capable of taking that long range shot very, very accurately. So obviously that position we fired, we, we set up in, is just to show you the points of contact. Obviously, we're not gonna stick our barrel out the window. We're gonna get back deep in the room if possible. So Matt's back deep in a room right now, and he's using what's available. We got some pallets and stuff to, to, to uh, set up on. Now, he's trying to get, again, as many points of contact as possible. Is it too low for you to throw your elbow up here? Is that better or worse? Uh, worse. Okay, so you drop your elbow and then lean against it, maybe, if you can. You're gonna use it, and even the slightest little uh, just putting your knee against something semi-solid and getting locked in it really helps, especially with long range. Now, we're not going to neglect the fundamentals of shooting, okay? We're going to get proper eye relief behind our optic. We're going to keep our optic uh, level. We're going to breathe properly. We're going to manipulate that trigger nice and slow. We're going to do the shot release, follow through, watch our impact, adjust for wind, and then take a second shot correction. Okay, so we're going to walk through a couple of shots right now. So go ahead, man, on your time, go ahead and engage that target. Okay, good job. So you saw him there, nice slow aim fire, good shot release, good follow through. And then another thing people do sometimes with this, they, they impede that magazine. They put too much pressure on the magazine or they push the magazine up against something and it causes a malfunction. Just be aware of that. Those uh, 20 round mags are really good for getting into an alternate position with, with an AR-15 or an M4. All right, so um, Matt, just do, just do a couple of quick shots, then hit your magnifier and then go to a couple of longer shots. Thank <laughs> you. 